In this video, I'm going to show you how to create an invoice in Microsoft Word. And this is exactly what we'll achieve by the end of this video. So if you want to learn how to create your very own custom invoice, keep watching. Hello guys, this is Online Office Teacher, where I help you manage your data and information through online video, just like this one. So if you are new here, consider subscribing. That said, let's jump into the video. Having open Word, I go over to the Insert tab, and I click on Table, and I'm going to go ahead and insert a table of two columns, three rows. So I have two columns, then I go down to the third row, then I click to insert my table. In the first cell, I'm going to go ahead and insert a logo. So I go over to the Insert tab again. Take note, my insertion point is inside the first cell. Then I click on Pictures, this device. I have my logo right here. I just select it. Click on Insert. It is too big. I'll go ahead and reduce the size like this much. In the next cell towards the right, I enter code. I will make it capital letters. In this cell below, I enter the name of my company. Hooper Web, and I hit enter. And I'm going to go ahead and enter my slogan. In here, I enter invoice number. So I'll just get a sample number. I'll make it in thousands. Perfect. Hit enter. Then I enter date. So with the date, if I want, I can insert an automated date such that anytime I open the invoice, I'll get a current date. But you don't have to do this if you don't want that. I just want to show you the possibilities. So to insert an automated date, I go over to insert. Then I go over to date and time. I'll go ahead and choose this format and make sure update automatically is checked. Then click on OK. So each time this document is open, you get a current date. Perfect. In the last row on the first cell, I enter my address. OK, I've entered my address. Finally, in this cell, I'll enter expiration date. And with this expiration date, it cannot be automated date. For this date, you always have to enter it. So I'll just go ahead and enter in some date so that it won't be blank. Awesome. I exit out of this table and I'm going to insert a new table. First of all, I hit enter. Then I go over to insert, click on table. This time around, I need a table of two columns, one row, just like that. So in here, I enter two. In the next cell, I enter the details of the client. So the name of the client is John Doe. Hit enter. His company name, JT Company Limited. Hit enter. If there's street address, you can enter. His phone number. Enter. If you use customer ID, you can go ahead and add that. Maybe some numbers. Next, I exit out of this table and I hit enter. Now go ahead and insert a new table by going to insert table. And this time around, I will insert a table of four columns, two rows, like this. In the first cell, I enter salesperson. Next job, followed by payment terms, and finally due date. All these fields are simple to get. Maybe the payment terms can be due on receipt. I exit out of this table and I hit enter. Next, I insert my final table. So I go over to insert, then I click on table. This table is going to be four columns, 15 rows, and in here, I wouldn't be able to get that. So to be able to insert the exact number of columns and rows, I need to click on insert table. Number of columns, I enter four. 
the number of rows i enter 15 then i click on ok perfect then i go ahead and enter in my text so first i have quantity description unit price and finally amount and the unit price going to the last three cells in here i enter subtotal going down i enter sales tax and finally grand total or you can just call it total whichever way you like it next i exit out of this table and i hit enter then i enter quotation prepared by maybe i can provide some line here I just hold down shift and I press the dash key, hit enter, another enter. Next, I enter in some acceptance text. To accept this quotation, sign here and return. I'll provide another mm -hmm. line. Perfect. And finally, I'll enter. Thank you for your business. So all my information is entered. The next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and format my tables. Starting from top. First of all, I don't need these lines on the table. So I select the entire table by clicking on the cross icon right here. Then I go over to table tools table design and the borders i click on borders then i choose no border meanwhile you see that i still have some lines these are only grid lines if i print the invoice these lines will not show they are only here to guide me so for you to be able to see this grid line you need to make sure that you go to borders and make sure view grid line is selected so if i click on it the grid lines will go off so i'll go back and make sure they are enabled perfect next i click on this text you only need to click on it then go over to layout then i'll align it to top right so that it will be at this corner meanwhile i'll increase the size by going to home and i'll go ahead and increase the size from here 28 is cool i can make it bold next i click in this cell and i go back to layout and i'm going to go ahead and align it to bottom left meanwhile i'll increase the size of the name of my company i go to home increase the size to 26 whatever size you get here will depend upon how lengthy your company name is next i select the slogan and i'm going to go ahead and make it italicized I'm still in this cell. Next, I go over to layout and the table tools, and I'm going to go ahead and increase the height to two centimeters. Next, I click anywhere in this cell, and I'll go ahead and align it bottom right. Perfect. Next, I click in here and make sure it is aligned top left and in here top right. Next is this table. All what I need to do here is move this line. Make sure you get these two headed arrows when you point on the line and the vertical bar, then you take it to this match. And I'm going to go ahead and take off the lines. So I select the entire table, then I go over to table design, borders, no border. Next is this table. I make sure everything is selected. Then I go over to layout and I'll increase the height to 0.7 centimeters. The table is still selected. I'll align everything to the center. Perfect. Maybe I want to change the thickness of the line on top. So I'll go to table design. Then I'll go over to line weight. At the moment, it is half PT. So I choose maybe two quarters. After choosing the line, you see that border painter is highlighted or selected. So all what I need to do is come right here. Make sure the tip of the brush is on the line. Then click on it and drag to the end. Perfect. 
So whilst the brush is still active, maybe I want to do the same thing to this particular line on top. Awesome. To disable the brush, I click on Border Painter and the brush is disabled. Next, I format this table by selecting it. So if I click in here, I click on the cross icon, then I go over to Layout and I'll increase the height to 0.7 centimeters. Now I'll format individual cells. So first of all, the row on top, I highlight everything, then I align everything to the center. The whole of this column, I'll align it to left center. The same goes to this particular column. And here, under unit price and amount, since we are going to be talking about money, they should be aligned to the right. So I highlight everything in here. Then I click on Align Center Right. Next, I'm going to go ahead and adjust the columns. So starting from here, I move it this much. I'll decrease the amount. Make sure you remove the highlighting. Like this much. And I'll decrease the unit price column as well. So that there will be enough space for discretion. Next thing I'm going to do is remove some lines here. I don't want starting from this side. I don't need all the inner lines. So I highlight them up. Then I go over to table design and I choose no order. But you can see that the line here is off. Meanwhile, we need it in the line here as well. So what we can do is I can highlight here. That is the three cells here. Then I go over to borders. Then I choose left border. Oops. It is still using the line weight I selected earlier. I'll take it back to half. And I go back to borders. Then I choose left border. Next, I go ahead and highlight these three cells. Then I go to borders. This time around, I'll choose bottom border. Maybe I can add some more flavor to my tables by making the headings bold. Perfect. Everything is set. However, you see that I have two pages which I don't want. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I want to decrease the margin down here below. So to do that, I go to the ruler right here. Then I hover in between the white area and the gray area. I'll get these two headed arrows. I click and drag down like this. I'll go up and do the same thing so that I'll have one page. I still have two pages. I can still go up a bit. Now I have one page. Perfect. One thing I can also do is select this text. Then I make it bold, italic, and align it to the center. Now let's take a preview of it and see how it will come up when we try to print it. Okay, so this is how my invoice will look like. Very neat and clean. I go back. So with this, you can go ahead and save it as a template so that each time you open the template, it will give you a new document instead of distracting the main template. So let me show you how you can save this as a template. To do that, I go over to File, then I click on Save As. You can choose whichever location you want. I'll choose Document and see what I'll get in the end. Then the file name, I call it Invoice. And then Save As Type, I drop down the arrow, then I go ahead and choose Word Template. And it will take me off from the Documents folder and now redirect it to the Custom Office Templates. Next, I click on Save and my invoice template is saved. So that's it on how to create an invoice in Microsoft Word. I hope this video was helpful. If you found value, kindly hit the like button, subscribe, and also enable the notification bell so that each time I post a new video on this channel, you will be the first to know. Keep watching, and I will see you in the next video.